Whether you have moved to Agile, and I've also seen crazy stuff. I mean, I haven't seen this in a while, but I worked with one group once who said, we're Agile. And at the start of a nine-month release cycle, they would individual teams would check out their code and then work on it <laughs> for seven months before integrating. And I said, you might have scrum teams, but you are fundamentally doing waterfall. Well, and, and, and here what I argue, they weren't even doing waterfall, right? Because they weren't yeah. iterating and learn anywhere. Um, and this is where the skill a part of my conversation came. So I try to separate waterfall from agile on the places where they, if they're run correctly, will iterate and learn. But I said, how often are they actually run correctly? That's a different story. And that brought me up to the skill distribution thing, because I argued that a lot of people thought skill distribution was an even bell curve. That is, most people are pretty good, some are awesome, and some are what I called scary. And by scary, I meant you didn't want to leave them alone in your code. <laughs> you just you wanted to look over the shoulder and double check things, right? Right. Um, and I argued from, um, and this is one of the pushbacks we got after after the, the webinar. Uh, it's like, where'd you get that data? Because I argued that, no, most people are in the scary camp. That is, you want to look over their code. You don't want to leave them alone in your product. Because while they might have some technical skills, they may not understand the domain correctly. Um, they may not have the interactive and networks built yet to actually build it right the first time. They, they could actually do as much or more damage than they do good just as easily. The vast majority of people are there. Some people are good. There's a good chunk of those, and very few people are, are, are awesome. And so I said, okay, depending on who you've got in your project, sometimes Agile is going to be better and sometimes Waterfall is going to be better um, because where you're going to learn. I guess I think about it a little bit. We're probably similar, but with slightly different lenses on. Because, <laughs> you know, you and I and Steve McConnell and others at Constructs have talked for decades about the average practice in our industry is closer to worst practice than best practice. Right. So if people think we're average, that isn't something you should be running around saying, woohoo, we're average, because it's not as good as you think it is. Right. Um, but I guess the way I usually think about it is I think most technical people are pretty good technically, right? If they are like, I'm really good in C, C, Java, Python, whatever it is, they're probably really good in that. And they're probably pretty good at detailed design. But as you start to get out of the things that are super close to the code and you start to talk about really good architects and then you start to talk about people who are really good in requirements practices and people who are really good at like reducing the risk and planning and running projects, you're getting into kind of more specialized skill sets that um, like in Waterfall, we really needed to make sure that we had really good people doing our requirements work so that they could harness some of those practices like modeling that you've been talking about, right? One of the jokes when we were having lots of conversations about, well, should I do this agile thing, right? And I always used to say, you don't need to move to agile if um, you have pretty knowable and stable requirements that you're good at understanding, right? You're like, okay, we understand this domain, we can do a good job of discovering the unknown, the known unknowns that exist for us here, right? So if you're really good at doing that, you're good at architecting that solution, at least from a high level perspective, and then kind of steering the project to get it good. And so one of the jokes I was like is, how good's your track record in Waterfall? Because if you're really bad at it, you should probably do this agile thing. It's more forgiving. <laughs> and when you get down to my scorecard, right? Yeah. When I got it's down to my scorecard, I, I Agile generally won because it at least gave me the opportunity to learn quicker that I was hosed. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> it's not that it was the the method itself was better. It was more of off than saying, you know, if I follow it at least a little bit. Now I said if I had I had scary people, I had really scary people on both. I thought they actually devolved to the same practice. I didn't think, you know, if you actually watch what people are doing with totally, just totally scary people, all junior, don't know what they're doing, and you watch what's happening, they're actually developing exactly the same, 
right? They yeah, may label one those waterfalls and label them, and they, they're doing a code and fix kind of thing. Um, and yep. it's no different. They're equivalent. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. It's good only luck. when you've got people that could actually <laughs> apply a little bit of that method that started to make a difference. And I was leaning for when there was a highly skilled, I leaned to waterfall because, hey, I think it's cheaper to iterate and learn on paper than it is in working code, right? If I can get you to learn and understand and get it right in paper, that's way cheaper than trying to get you to learn and get it right by writing software than having to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. There's a little additional overhead than doing that. But once you get out of those awesome people, I started leaning agile because it gave you that opportunity to learn quicker that you're fooling yourself, that you're not as good as you think you are. I guess in my perfect world, I'd have a little bit of the combo of the two. Right. So I don't think you should go straight into.